At Summer NAMM 2019, I wanted to make a different type of video that's typically done. I wanted to go in depth with philosophy and why certain pieces of gear were created. I wanted to go into the application and how this will change the way that we record or mix. Okay, we're here with Will from Burrow Audio. Yeah, we're here at the Summer NAMM Show 2019. Uh, behind me, I'm just going to quickly list off all of our products that we're showing here at the show, and then I'll get into a little of the philosophy. Uh, first off, we have the B1 and the B1D 500 series mic pre. Uh, if you look above that, we have the B2 Bomber ADC, which was actually the first product we ever put out, which is a two-channel A to D converter, all class A, all discrete, with no capacitors and signal path, and with a custom proprietary high headroom, very linear transformer on the input. That's uh, an extremely well-known product. Uh, we sell a lot of them. Uh, it's the most popular is what I'm trying to say with that. And um, it's really kind of changed the way that people think about conversion. So I'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, we also above that have the mix bus. We have a 32 channel um, mix bus, which is uses a, a nickel output transformer and also has this really, really cool 60B of gain, which basically what that does is pushes the, the, the mix through custom op amps, and what that does gives it a real gluey sound, kind of really uh, like a tape machine kind of sound that you'd get out of it. Um, next we have the B26 controller monitor, um, which is just incredibly uh, open, really for transparency, really hearing, hearing your mix, hearing the imaging, the width, the clarity. Uh, above that we have the B16, which is our two-slot interface, uh, which is our two-slot mothership. So. Uh, I'm going to get next into the B80 mothership, which is our bigger one, but the B16 is our smaller version, which has two slots for daughter cards. Next, we have our two-channel D to A, and again, everything we do is all class A, all discrete, and has no capacitors and signal paths, and the end result is just incredibly clear sounding, uh, really musical, um, versatile, just sounds, we're putting the soul power back into digital recording, basically. Yeah. Uh, a lot of other converters that we've tested and I've heard uh, I, that I know are made with you know products that haven't gone all the way like what we do. This is a no compromise approach where the owner of the company, Rich Williams, who um, has put you know his blood, sweat, and tears into this, didn't want to have any anyone or anything compromise the quality of the sound. He knew it was possible through designing electronics and wanted to make a brand that only did everything all the way, 100%. And no no marketing team that's going to have a say in the compromise or no one who's going to say, well, the margin's not going to be high enough. Or he, he really went from the ground up to make something that was the best sounding possible. And I was actually in the recording studio at the time that he developed the B80 Mothership, which is our 10-slot modular interface. Um, you know, we have we, it is true, while it is true we have transformers on the input, um, a lot of people do think of this brand as being, you know, especially the converters, as being a colored interface. And while it is true that if you hit it really hard, like any good piece of analog gear, you get something else out of it, kind of non-linearities and saturation. Um, but the, it's not meant to be always slammed in that way. So it, why people do love it is because you can get that extra out of it, but you can also back off. And um, as we were just speaking before this video, there's a lot of misconception about uh, the Burl converters being colored. And actually the very first time that uh, Rich had his gear tested out to run specs on it, the guys who'd run it said they had never seen a converter with a truer phase response. Oh. Uh, there's a problem with digital conversion in general where, uh, long story short, there's problems with phase response in, in, in converter chips. And so the, having a transformer on the front end, if you're not slamming it really hard to get that extra saturation, that extra good stuff out of it, you just really want to give a good capture. Um, the transformer keeps the fundamental of the note. You know, there was all the harmonics that build off the fundamental. It keeps that right in line where it's supposed to be, which is fighting against the converter chip. So meaning without the transformer, things tend to be a little bit out of phase. With the transformer, it lines it up really perfectly. So when people hear the Burl stuff, a lot of times what you hear is the, the low end really open up. Wow. And it's not that we're adding low end back in, yeah. it's that we're just letting it through. So you know, most converters are a bottleneck in the studio. Yeah. 
that's where things get kind of bottlenecked down. So with the mothership, that's not the case. And again, because you have those transformers, you have all class A electronics, you can hit a little harder. It, yeah. it can give you a little extra if you yeah. want that coloration or that. It's really not coloration, I think it was just musicality, a little more um, peak saturation, something that happens. So that means the transient's gonna get kind of tucked down a little bit and that helps the record sound better. So you were saying uh, before I set up the camera that um, you know, there was a lot of attention to the analog part of yeah. the converters. Right. So, you know, a, many other very popular interfaces out there use 50 cent op amps. Uh, I'm not going to call out the company right now, but recently I had a friend working at a company and I want to do a comparison with somebody on our two channel unit compared to a very popular unit that you see selling all the time. And, and I asked my friend who works for this company, hey, how can we calibrate this other interface? And his answer was, you can't. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, it's a 50 cent op amp. And that ended that conversation. And so, you know, I'm really spoiled in that I've been working, you know, in this company for 10 years now, and I know the listening tests that go into all this stuff. Yeah. And so you have a really robust analog circuit that's, you know, was similar to what you'd find in a tape machine, similar to what you'd find in a console, in a discrete console. Yeah. And what that means is you're building something to make sure that you know, you're not losing, it's like that bottleneck that I'm talking about, that a lot of companies, you know, are making a lot of money. I'm yeah. not mad at that. So, but what I'm, what, yeah. just to finish that thought, they realize that, you know, something's almost as good, it's pretty good. Yeah. We, don't, we don't go for that here yeah. at Burl. We want to have everything be the top quality that is, you know, that absolutely possible to make the best sounding, you know, piece of equipment that, that can be made. That's what we are. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So what do you say of like, uh, somebody says, well, I just won't hit my converters that hard. I'll make sure I don't go above negative 20 and that way there's lots of headroom. I won't overload the analog parts of the circuit. Um, obviously there's still an advantage to having really good components on that analog side, you know? Yeah, well again, like I think I'd mentioned, we've done uh, listening tests, we do A-B tests all over the world really, you know, primarily in the U.S. of course, but uh, we've been traveling to Europe, uh, to China, Japan, Korea, uh, you know, we, we, we love to go all over. Um, and we meet people, you know, musicians, producers, engineers around the world. And even when you don't speak the same language, you know, we really get each other. Yeah. There's one kind of, there's something that ties us all together as, you know, I'm not going to swear, but, you know, crazy mofos who just, you know, we get it. We all get it together. There's something yeah. you can see about the people that you, they, you just, yeah. the same. Yeah. So uh, and, and all of these, every single converter shootout we've done with the mothership against whatever will be in a studio, yeah. be it Lynx, you know, Prism, Avid, whatever it be, Apogee. The number one word that we hear, the number one word we hear, and when we ask people, we don't tell them what to think, we'll do a blind shootout and we'll say, what do you hear? And, and you know, more than nine times out of 10, it's clarity. Interesting. And so, you know, we know how to get, you know, the most out of our converters. I know how to I know that I like, in my, from my opinion, I like a snare drum pushed hard through the mothership. Yeah. I like what that does to yeah. my snare sound. Yeah. Um, but no matter what, the number one word we hear is clarity. So, you know, class AB uh, electronics have what's called crossover distortion. And that basically adds a little bit of haziness to the mix. So with Burl being all class A in a converter, which is really rare, we have this incredible clarity. You don't have that haziness. So when you remove that, um, you just get this really beautiful imaging. You can hear, uh, you can really hear the the audio, the image open up a little bit. Yeah. Um, there was a composer in Los Angeles, Richard Gibbs, a really good friend of ours now, who first came onto the Burl, you know, into the Burl family because he says he knows his orchestra, he knows their names and where they all sit. And with the Burl, when he used a Burl converter, he could hear them all and where they are. Yeah. So, you know, so that's, that has to do with, you know, the class A discrete electronics is that there's that sense of clarity that we have in our converter that is uh, really very rare. We've never found anything else that compares. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, man, thanks for having me. You got it.